Hold on to the that. Canadian? <laughs> You're an ass. <laughs> Just got a moose. Call me a moose? <laughs> You're even more of an ass. What the hell? Deanna and Victoria here with Radioactive, and tonight we have on two very, very special friends of ours. So, Cassie, we obviously had you on the show before, so we know all yep. about you. We don't need you to talk for the first five minutes. First, Bellamy, <coughs> can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, so my name is Bellamy. I am 15 days short of my 28th birthday, so I'm 27 at the time we're filming this. Um see uh i play flute i sing i can't draw worse shit so cassidy's got me beat there (laughs) i am a gender which means i don't identify as having any gender i have my flag right behind me and my pronouns are they them i love cats i like like dogs i have to have at least one dog in my life let's see obviously i like black bell brides like everybody else here, Black Bell Brides Army. See, just re- beca- been emotionless and white fan theory. Oh, my God. <laughs> that scared me. <laughs> I was saying before the cat interrupted. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, been emotionless and white fan for a year. Didn't really get into the music too much until after the new album came out. And after that, it's just like snowballed. And I'm a massive fan now. Uh, let's see. Been, I'm also a fan of Panic at the Disco, which uh, I don't know if you can see, but I'm wearing earrings with the logo. I got him a hot tub a couple of years ago. Um, and, oh, yeah, and I am a fan of Dark Divine, as represented by my latest tattoo that I got Wednesday. Currently work at a warehouse. Still live at home, but that's only because I can't afford to move out. Who can? That's all I got for now. Watch, it'll pop. A lot more will pop in my head later after the Zoom call's done. <laughs> that always happens. <laughs> always. Well, oh, that's kind of how uh, everything works, right? You 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 get into a conflict yeah. with a friend, and you're like, "Man, f you!" Duh, duh, duh. And then you go back, and later you're like, "I should have said this. I should have said that." Does oh, anyone man. else like after specifically after like a middle school confrontation go have a shower and like you're in the shower just arguing with the person? Yeah, yeah. yeah Cassie Literally. knows what's up. <laughs> yep. <laughs> What are we? What are we doing tonight? What do we got? Battle of inner demons. <laughs> yeah, this is just one big therapy session for all four of us. Screw the notes I planned for this episode. Topic number one. So, being that the new year, we just rang in the new year. What are some of your guys' favorite albums or songs of 2022? Well, all my favorite bands released new music last year. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> obviously, since we got. Most of us are in Blackfield gear. We got uh, them dropping the morning EP, which was just, oh my God. <laughs> I, and I, I was kind of skeptical about Devil on the Recording, not because it's a bad song, it's not, but it's, you know, I was kind of skeptical about hearing it live and it just slapped the shit out of me live. I was like, yes. <laughs> Wait, you went to the third leg? Yeah, I went to two oh. shows. I went to Corbin and Nashville. Oh. Actually. <laughs> I was, I, yeah, was the crying. Corbin show, the K- Corbin Kentucky show. I was dressed in full wild one gear, and I felt glorious. <laughs> I, I like not even the bath, the fluorescent lights in a gas station bathroom made me look bad. I was winning that day. I love that. Yes, Ian. <clears throat> Bellamy, can we share with them our uh, wild one names? Oh, we should all do that, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, if, wait, I, I forget what mine is. I when I remember oh. it, I remember it. Hey, get okay. it. Hold on to the that. Canadian? <laughs> You're an ass. <laughs> <laughs> Just got a moose. <laughs> Call me a moose? <laughs> You're even more of an ass. What the hell? Cassidy oh, and I have a fucked up sense of humor. Victoria is the protector. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck it's all of you. <laughs> <laughs> you know how we put like clips at the start of the episode of just funny bloopers? That's going in the start. So I have evidence <laughs> that Casty called me a moose. Ah! <laughs> I'm nice. I promise I'm nice. Oh, okay, Ian, sweet. what's yours? No, 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 no. You can't put me on the spot like that, Missy. Ian's We're just going the optimist. Next. 
Wait, what did you say, Bellamy? <laughs> so yours, you can you so yours, yours is the yours is the optimist. That's correct. I am the optimist. I don't feel optimist like it Prime. Most days. Are you like a transformer? <laughs> I Why am I the adult in the room right now? What the fuck? You know That's what, man? Oh, hey, I'm the youngest, so I'm allowed to be a, like a child. So that's true. <laughs> you know, I, I I never really cared for. Okay, look, the first Transformers movie was pretty solid. I'll give it that. That was great. But then they just kept going and going. Oh, I like I've never really been into Transformers, but I agree. Like it just did not need to continue. No, no. I, I, I don't never, think I've, I've never seen any of them. Me neither. That's what's good. I would I would watch the first one again. I do remember I've seen the first one, so it's it's a it's okay. When I was a young little child, I went to the grocery store with my mom, and they had like transformer toys that turned into like the cars and stuff. I wonder if I still have that. I literally just remembered I had one of those, but it was pretty. It was pretty cool. I gotta say, fond childhood. Probably memory. find it randomly. Dude, I find also it randomly. had some of them boys <laughs> growing mm-hmm. up. Oh. Should I share what my uh, wild one's name is? Yes. 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 We get off track. <laughs> we do. We get off track of the show all the time. So mine is the apostle. Could you elaborate, please? No. <laughs> it fits her, though. It really fits her. I, it does. I like it for her. I do. I do. <clears throat> okay. My, my and- brain is mashed potatoes after this week. It's always mashed potatoes. You know what? I like to sit here and <laughs> Just, take this. What are you going to do? Are you going to call me a moose? Because apparently <laughs> that's the level we are at today. I would never call you a moose. Okay. Back to names. Yes. Because we, we we got off the rails of the crazy train again. So. All right. What's Back yours, Victoria? It. Mine oh, is the protector. The protector. It suits. It suits. That's of all we got. It does. <laughs> it fits her. What's next on the agenda, Victoria? Well, we were still talking about favorite songs and albums, and we were talking about our wild ones name. So, Cassidy, oh, yeah. what are some of your favorite songs and albums to come out this past year? Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah. as you guys know, Foundations of Decay by My Chemical Romance dropped. Uh, in 2022. Wait, and you're telling me fact, My Chemical Romance has a new song? What? Really? No. What the they're hell they're, they're back together? What are you living under? <laughs> I Don't seriously don't know. This should don't not come as a ass. surprise. I okay, okay. Okay, okay. Anyway, back to it, Cassidy. Anyway. So, uh, Foundations of Decay. Fun, fun fact. When, that, when they dropped that song, I was um, training somebody. So, uh, I work at a gym. I am a personal trainer. So when they dropped that song out of the blue, I was in the middle of training one of my clients who happened to be a elder emo at heart. And so we spent about seven minutes of her training session listening to the song and crying. Um, so then, <laughs> and then I believe it was the same, it was the same day that Blackle um, dropped their uh, Born Again music video. And then Motionless and White uh, dropped um, Masterpiece, I think. So it was all in one no, day. No, Slaughterhouse. All that happened. Okay, Slaughterhouse. Slaughterhouse. Sorry. Masterpiece okay, was the month Okay, I stand corrected. But yeah, so all of that happened in like one day and my mind could not Yeah, it. it was Foundations of Decay and then at midnight, well, 11 p.m. for us, Cassidy, but uh, yeah. Midnight, Black Bell Brides, and Motionless and White both dropped the song. We were uh, yep. on Jake's stream watching it, Born Again, and then we watched yep. the listen to Slaughterhouse, and I was headbanging like crazy with Slaughterhouse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was it was fun. Um, I don't remember what else. I don't. I think there was well, obviously the morning uh, EP uh, dropped this year, and then didn't I feel like Pierce the Veil had like at least a single or something that came out. They've dropped two singles this year so far. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, yeah. So yeah. Oh. Uh, them and I didn't remember. There was oh, just so I, much I that Dark like, Divi- happened. Dark, yeah, Dark Divine, they had, I think they had Halloween Town out shortly. I think, no, they had two singles out when I became a fan. Halloween Town and The Fear. 
but they dropped like several more singles and then they dropped their debut EP at the end of September, which was so, oh my god, I'm so proud of them. They're supposed then, to be dropping uh, album this and year. Then, and then like one of the local bands that like that's from Wisconsin. I live in Iowa now, but um so one of the bands that I follow from Wisconsin, their <laughs> drummer actually went to uh school with high school with and they were in band with me so uh they dropped um another album uh this year and that's fucking sick i love it um i think i'm trying to remember what it's called let me look it up so the band is called once around and yeah okay so their their album that they dropped uh in 2022 is called uh it's called um call it fate or redemption it's just um one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen songs. They're all pretty solid. So yeah, I was pretty happy when they dropped an album too. So yeah. Ian, do you want to go what next or show? I, okay, I'll go next because I have a lot to say about this. <laughs> yeah. So obviously Motionless and White released Scoring Man in the World, which do I need to yeah. say more yeah. about that album? One, it came no. out on my birthday. So, oh, I mean, that was sick. pretty sick. That's great. And, yeah, that album is just killer. Wow. Start to finish, it's just... It is. The only song I don't listen to that much is Porcelain, just because it is kind of a slower song, and I tend to just want to... Yeah, I don't really listen to Porcelain either. You know what I'm saying? I, I just don't really care what? about it. Oh my okay. God. okay, I'm going to be honest. When I first got into Black Veil Brides and I would listen to Retch and Divine, I always skipped uh, Done For You and lost it all. The reason oh, being... Okay, oh, listen. Oh, let me finish. Let, Ian, oh, let me finish. Oh, oh, oh. Just wait. When Because Black Veil was the first like metalcore oh. emo band I got into. So when I first started listening to them, I just wanted like the heavy songs. So that's why I would always skip them. But then once I okay. heard those songs however many times and actually started getting more into the band, then I listened to them. And obviously I love them. But that's why. Makes sense. Okay. okay. Uh, and then, yeah, this year, <coughs> or this pa- like this last year, I feel like has just been all about albums because I'm a big fan of State Champs, more like punk. Cool. But okay. they released Kings of the New Age, and that album is so good. And then, obviously, The Morning by Blackville Brides. Sleeping with Sirens released Complete Collapse, which that one's yep. cool, too. And Sumerian Records, if you're watching this, I'm still waiting for my signed vinyl that I pre-ordered in June, and I still don't have it yet. Oh, don't feel bad about the vinyl. They're so it's slow on stuff. The are backlogged to hell. Yeah. Uh, I, ordered, I, I pre-ordered a copy, a vinyl of um, mm. Dark Divine's debut EP, and like so many of us are still waiting on that that pre-ordered it so don't feel it's not just them i promise i totally for, i totally missed one song that i like freaking love that was released what's um, voices in my head by falling in a oh my god yes i absolutely freaking love banger. falling in a verse uh, didn't like, they also they're... release um uh zombified oh, didn't zombified, zombified come out yeah i think zombified I think is a certified banger is it? Okay. I, I, I think gave myself yeah. whiplash had been into Zombified. <laughs> um, Zombified was released in, I want to say, November of 2021, because I remember uh, I was super excited. That's when I had bought the tickets to see them in uh, January of 2022. And okay. So, okay. like, that tour was the first tour that we got to hear Zombified live. And it was fucking okay. awesome. That makes sense. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was then- one of the shows... I think that show in January of Falling Universe was one of the shows that I like injured my neck from headbanging. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I one the one show I went to last year that, that I wasn't expecting to get a bang over from, but I did when I went to see Panic at the Disco in October <laughs> on their really? for their new album tour, and I was like, I know I'm like, well, I was headbanging. It was re- especially when they started playing the new stuff because they like did a few songs in between like start and finish and they did a full run of the album like in the middle it was Jesus. great i'm just picturing like i chime in with haven't you people ever heard of and then <laughs> bellamy's just oh. <laughs> <laughs> not really on that not really on sins i think it was a oh, which one was it? i think it was um viva lost vengeance and middle of a breakup the first two tracks on the album like i was just doing this number <laughs> 
I don't think he saw it during uh, Don't Let the Light Go Out. I'm afraid. I think he made eye contact with me a little bit later. He was like closer to the where I was at. But like I held up a sign during Don't Let the Light Go Out because that's like my favorite from the new album. I will fully <laughs> admit I have not listened to their new album. I haven't I, either. I don't have music. Like, so <laughs> Panic at the I Disco. The final over here. <laughs> final over here. The sign I brought somewhere down that way. While I was in high school, I actually really liked Panic at the Disco. I had my dad's 2006 Honda Civic, and uh, I would drive around, and I would listen to uh, Vices and Virtues, because I had this friend named Alyssa, who wasn't really a friend, she was kind of a, eh. but I would pick her up, (laughs) and she would bring CDs. And we'd listen to like a bunch of emo shit. And then she left it in my car and was like, here, you can hold on to this if you want. And I'm like, yeah, sure. I like the album. So Vices and Virtues was Panic at the Disco like esque for me. Oh, uh, yeah. Other Vices than that, I didn't really good. listen to a whole lot of their stuff. <laughs> I've listened, I've, I've tried listening to some of their older stuff. I probably should go back and re listen to it just to see what I think now. But like, when I first started listening, I'm like, I like a lot of their songs, but more, it's more of their newer stuff. Um, at least after like Brendan was, uh, was this, like the sole remaining member, <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's mostly like this new album. I just I like all of it. There are definitely some songs I'm like I'm good, but like uh, Sugar Soaker comes to mind. It's not a bad song. I just really don't like the music video for it. But that's neither here nor there. Like I said, my favorite song is "Don't Let the Light Go Out." That one just hit me like I. This is relevant, at least in terms of the music video. It t bowled me from both sides because I heard context of it and what it's saying, and I heard subcontext, and I was like, God damn it. <laughs> hey, did uh, are you guys Avril Lavigne fans at all? Yeah. Um, there are did, her, did her new album come out this year, or did it come out in 2021? That's a good question. I don't remember. I don't remember if it oh, came out 22 or 21. I can look it up. I've been here steady, like listening to what you guys say and then looking up like um, mine. We have another song. 2022. 2022. Okay. I'm going to butcher their name. I apologize, but. Good luck. Ma- Maneskin? Did I get that right? You know who I'm talking oh, about. Uh, uh, oh, guys. How do you pronounce I, it? Munskin? I have no. Idea. I know. Okay, but you know who I'm talking about, right? You know who I'm talking about. I don't. Okay, Ian, I know who you're talking about. Ian, do you know that song that goes, Because I'm begging, begging you. Oh, yeah, by Manskin or whatever the hell. Yeah. 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 Anyway, we'd have to look at it. They're like, they're a Nordic band, so we don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry. I don't know. You know what band I'm talking about, though? They they released a song called Supermodel this year. And it is so good too. Love that song. I'm just looking at my playlist right now at what songs I miss. <laughs> oh, Riptide by Beartooth. That, oh, yeah. that is oh, such a good I'm one. Breaking. I I Freaking never listened to Beartooth in a day like a day in my life, but that song came out and I was like, they put something so in that good. song. Holy Here's shit. Here's the thing. Here's what the thing about Riptide okay? by Beartooth. It's it's good. It's a good song. However, I do prefer everything they've done up until Riptide. I like if I had to pick uh, a Beartooth album that was my favorite, it would have to be disgusting. The very first one, <clears> twenty fourteen. <throat> it's it's yep. fan freaking fantastic. Song after song, start to finish is phenomenal it's so good right and i liked disease i liked aggressive but i couldn't really get behind below i liked two or three songs on the album yeah and riptide is a good tune it's a very nice tune but i, I would have to say that disgusting is by far my favorite thing that bear to the- also the- um i prevail released an album this year too yep i yes. have to add that Dude, too i love i love i prevail so good I- I am so jealous of anybody that got to see them with Pierce the Veil. But if right? you left before, if you left before I Prevail went on, I hate you. Right? Like the <laughs> audacity of people to do that. Like what the hell? Uh, Honestly. I mean, 
it's no different than people leaving before Black Hill Brides takes the stage. So. You know what I have to say to those people? Go fuck yourself. I go now. I haven't got <laughs> yeah, you to go can. yet. Right, so I've had to look some of these up, like in between uh, people chatting. So the other day, I started listening to uh, an album that Miss May I actually came out with, "The Curse of Existence," and it's uh, oh, wh which one? Earthshaker and Obl Into Oblivion are pretty good. I like those two a lot. Those are pretty good. Uh, obviously, we have The Morning by Blackfield Brides. See, I want to touch base on Devil, dude. Listen, <laughs> Devil is by far... Dude, if if any, if any Blackfield fan had a doubt in their mind that Blackfield was, like, going to break up or be done, listen to Devil... And then come find me. Because that yeah. just shows that they're freaking back. And they're ready, dude. Oh my god, yeah. Like, that one, like, again, on the recording, I was kind of skeptical about it. Like, not that I hate it, but, you know. Okay, not on the recording. I, I phrased that wrong. Uh, like, on the recording, it sounds pretty good. But I was kind of skeptical about hearing it live. Because, like, I thought it might sound good. But, you know, I wasn't sure. Because it's not my favorite off the, uh, the new EP. Like, I can, any like, anyone can actually rank it, though. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, Cassidy, your ranking thing on TikTok. I'm like, I about yeah. died trying to rank a little all of them. <laughs> anyway. The revival's um, my no, favorite. Hearing Devil Live, I wasn't originally going to record anything in Nashville because I just wanted to enjoy my last concert for 2022. But here, after hearing it the night, Devil the Night Before live in Kentucky, I was like, no, I'm recording that tomorrow night. Yeah. That just, it's like, bam, slaps the shit out of me. Yep. Um, I be, uh, see better angels has the effect that blackbird has on me in the sense that when I first click on the song, you hear the intro and you're like, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Why do I not remember? On, it's going to be all right. I don't remember what better angel sounds like. I'm it's gonna get, uh, get. really do, melodic. Do. Oh fuck. I don't know if I can sing off the top of my head. Wait, I'm going to listen to this one. Oh yeah, yeah. It kind of is like a, a like a ballad of the lonely hearts thing, or is that what I'm thinking of? The yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Slaughterhouse oh, is just freaking crazy. That yes. uh, that was just what we uh, Bellamy and Cassidy when we saw them in Cincinnati. Yeah. Dude. Did they yeah. play Slaughterhouse when you saw them? We yes. Yes. They've, been slaughterhouse doing since, and they've been doing it since the second leg. And Let me tell you, so hard. I saw them on the first leg, and yeah, they didn't have any of like they didn't have the album no, out they, yet. The so. only one they had out, they didn't. They played Cyberhex. They, well, they, 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 Cyber oh, yeah. Cyber yeah. They, yeah, they just on had the Cyberhex. I think when I saw them and Cyberhex was out, and I heard it live. I was looking at my buddy on the drive up to Chicago and I was like, dude, Cyberhex Live is going to be so awesome. And it was. It was it great. It is awesome. It just been like, wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Speaking of sl uh, Slaughterhouse, Cyberhex, there's no way in hell I can do Slaughterhouse. Uh, you can't read this, but I'm going to do a flute cover of Cyberhex. Ow. <laughs> Cassie's over like, I'm going to fucking stick. You. <laughs> Sad part is she knows where I live, so she could. Is there like <laughs> is there some friendly is there some friendly competition between the two of you no. or what? No, no. No, we both want to kill each other. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah. No, I'll yes, just leave all the most enlisted in white like uh oh, covers yeah. to Bellamy because uh they know more about most enlisted in white than I ever will. So, but yeah, but you're doing masterpiece. So, I mean, yeah. you beat me to that one. So, I mean, I guess it's a fair That's trade. I've had, had that one. I think, I think I've had that one figure out since uh, the Cincinnati show, right? Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I think I remember looking at because we were both dicking around on our flutes before the show. Dude, yeah. uh, let me just say that that wait to get into the venue, I was sweating my balls off. Way you all you were. I was wearing yeah. fucking leather pants. You looked you like are. a lobster. You were. And by God, you were a dude. lobster by the time everything was done, Cassie. You yeah, were. I was. I was very red. I remember looking at the picture. Was next to each other. I'm like, God, I look like a goth potato. 
a cute gossip. I was okay. just like, yeah, I'm not I was just towering. I, did. I was just towering over Bellamy. <laughs> I have something to add quick. We're not helping with that, so. I have something to add about you going. Um, You know, in school, when the teachers are like, one, two, three, all eyes on me. That's what you remind me of. You're like, when my oh, hand God. goes up, your mouth goes shut. I have That's what you remind more. me of. I have one more song. And then okay, I go ahead. I don't think I have a... Okay, go ahead. All right, so there's a band called Alpha Wolf. Have you ever heard of them? Yes, because you told me about them. Alpha Wolf dropped a single called 60 Centimeters of Steel. And it is freaking nuts. 60 Centimeters of Steel in the Stomach. I hate myself and you fucking love it. Ian, message me about that later because I've got to give that a listen. That just hits so hard. Is it a song that I should add to my workout playlist, Ian? Yeah, no, dude. Yeah, Cassidy. You Sounds need, like something I'm gonna be headbanging to in my car. <laughs> listen to these guys and put them on your workout playlist, dude. They are like crazy. Oh, one more, one okay. more. Shit, I forgot. One Slaughter more, then we're moving. Slaughter released a song called 1984. Slaughter to Prevail, 1984. That was fantastic. It's just Alex terrible, and he's like Jack. He's freaking shredded. He's all greasy and sweaty, and he's in workout pants and tennis shoes, and he's just like beating his chest and he's like Ugh. one more song we need to talk about werewolf motionless oh, and white yeah. oh yeah werewolf. yes like dude that one already gave me huge mj vibes when they first released it and then i was just like the music video came out and i'm like i love this now <laughs> it's so good that's one of my favorite songs <laughs> off that album <laughs> you guys want to know the sign for werewolf in oh sure it. so where wolf I can't Where? see your hand. Where? A finger wag. Wolf. Wolf. Werewolf. Where? Wolf. Okay. We're on to the next topic, and this one is Ian's topic. It is time, Ian, for the Phantom Tomorrow comic book. <laughs> Can I go grab my copies real quick? Yes. I uh, did not order it, nor Me have neither. I read it. So, oh, um, it's so I'm, good. Okay, it's let so me good. let me just say I am glad I didn't order it because the company is awful, absolute mm-hmm. trash. Oh, I and agree. I feel so I feel so incredibly bad for Black Girl Brides and uh, all of them for putting in the work and the artists that they reached out to to do all the artwork and stuff for it because this company is just not. It's like, yeah, they, the lowest of low. And yeah, the second like, one, they pre order it. And yeah, so, yeah, so the and second like, issue, yeah, the second issue, pre ordered in February, they said it was going to ship in May. To, and it took it until literally December 31st for it to get to me. My God. Come on, got yeah. it on New Year's they Eve have, last year. No, no. The action figures. The action figures, yeah. Oh, yes. That they oh were, God. that they want, that people could pre order in 2021, right? Nobody's even gotten them yet, and it's yeah. stuck in 2023 now. Yeah, so, no, I I'm not big on action figures, so I didn't order one. But I, that is just so fucked up. I, oh, yeah, I yeah, almost, yeah, yeah. Ruth yeah. said something about that, didn't she? Yeah, Ruth. Ruth yeah. got ordered one. And I'm like, really, guys? Can you at least get those out? Like, yeah, comics yeah, actually, for real, right? Action figures out, please. Yeah, yeah. So i have not read the uh comic book i've heard very good things about it um so far from the people that have gotten them um but i am just glad that i never ordered it or wasted my money on them same as much, as much as i would love to have it because like i i've seen like the previews and stuff with like their artwork and stuff that's in there and i freaking love it and i would have loved to have that i'm just money wise i am glad that i didn't spend my money on it Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that makes complete sense, honestly. Especially with yeah, like, the first one, the first comic, it took a while, but you know, we were okay. We were patient with that because it was like what twenty yeah. twenty one. It's like okay, yeah. we understand. It was still, I th- yeah, kind of like it was we still, were still COVID kind of shit the... going around, so we yeah. understood. We were patient. Twenty twenty two, COVID's over. Where the fuck are you guys doing? Yeah, who's who's read it? Victoria, have you read it? Nope, I don't I have one. Just... Bellamy, have you read it? You and Bellamy, I think. I think. A, you and Bellamy, yeah. <laughs> All right, there we go. Oh, I have both. So yes. <laughs> All right, perfect. Uh, it's so like book club. 
<laughs> Black right, Veil I books. I want to talk about... Buck, Buck Club Dude. for Band Nerds. There we go. There you go. Dude, look at Nine, bro. Look at how freaking sick he is. He's so menacing. Smash. He really is, though. Like, oh, wait, come on. He really Smash. is. The... Okay, but like, and the, um, and well, it's technically there's two parts in the first one, but on the, it says, the very first line of part two says, will we live when we die? I'm thinking, all right, who's saying that and who's lying? Because that's from this chorus of Scarlet Cross. Yeah. Uh, is it will we live, will we die, or will no, we live? Will, will, will we, we live, live when we die? Oh. It is when we die. I was fighting yeah. with people over this. I'm like, I'm right. And they're like, no, it's will we live, will we die? It's like, no, it's will no, we live when, when we, we die. Live when we die. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about the comic book, Ian? Yeah, hold on one sec. I will. But first, <laughs> Scarlet Cross. It's right there. It's the name yeah. of the song, man. Okay. Oh, right. yeah, dude, the connection with the Scarlet Cross, I almost lost my shit when I first read that. Good. I remember in the, I think it was the Outburn article that Andy had said, like, the comics are supposed to tell a different story. The album's supposed to tell a different story. The music videos are supposed to be telling a different story. I'm thinking, that might be true, but you cannot convince me that they aren't connected. Hold they on. are connected, but okay. it's, uh, I think how he worded it was they're it's different storylines going on at like different times so to break down the comic book for you okay guys, here we go yes please. we have a mad scientist named first of all I, I i i have to say this andy i believe is a huge fan of sam raimi yes yes from what i can yeah. gather he is yes. a sam yeah, raimi he is, he is. Fan. when making so, the fields of bone it. music video he shouted out uh the evil dead franchise directed by sam raimi he came out with a movie called Dark Man, and Dark Man reminds me a lot of the Phantom Tomorrow. I believe that Andy you know has been inspired by Dark Man in some aspect, because a lot of people, a lot of people, pay homage to uh, movies or music uh, that they grew up on, yeah. like yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Psycho, right? I do believe that, uh, first of all, Blackbird's character uh, is uh, similar to Darkman. Not exactly, but it is similar to. And the, and the story arc of it is very similar. Um, Darkman consists of a scientist who wants to make prosthetic skin. The Phantom of Tomorrow consists of a very self-centered scientist who only cares about himself, and he wants to cheat death. Yeah, he... Supposedly working on, like you said, uh, a sort of potion seems like the wrong word, but like an elixir to cheat death with. Serum. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Serum, that is the correct word. Thank you. How he ends up in the field of bone, it's actually really kind of cool. Like, I mean, cool. like it's definitely, it's not necessarily unique, but it is unique. I have so many questions. I have so many questions. Oh, by the way, Ian, I found the part that says that they're all supposed to tell different stories. Okay, let me just cri read this entire paragraph. It's not a very long paragraph. I say that. It's going to take me forever. Uh, instead of... Okay, so this is a quote from the Outburn article in, the, in, the, in this magazine. Instead of creating a film to further elaborate the tale, Blackwell Brides chose the route of fleshing out this world by using comic book format. Andy elaborates on this decision. I'm a big comic book guy. Everyone who is working on this book has a, has a deep history of these characters. This mythology and references, ca references characters in Alan Moore's work or these other things we love. I wanted to make something that genuinely could be enjoyed by a comic book fan and not just an, oh God, an a salary, I don't know how to pronounce that word, pre-order package for a rock record. It's a tightrope that, pe that people walk. The concept record can sometimes be agonizing for, list for a listener because it is very rare that you are in entering into a situation with all the information. The idea was that we make Blackbird and his world something that can be seen from in many different areas, styles, me and mediums, and to do it all in the course of one cycle, record cycle. The comic tells a different story. The record tells a different story. The music, vi music video chronology that we have been building tells a different story. I like the idea of creating a character you can put into different er eras of styles onto. End quote. Okay. There you have it. 
they all tell different stories. But again, you can't convince me they aren't connected either. So, but oh, I yeah, think they're for sure connected. That, but I think oh, that's yeah. kind of the point that Andy's making. Yeah, they all tell different stories, but it's okay if we want them to all be connected. It just depends on yeah. who you talk. Yeah. Andy's probably sitting there in a chair like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, the, the cliffhanger, I, I understand you didn't read the second part. I don't know if any of you were, got the second part uh, that ordered it. I know you said you didn't cast the Victoria. Did and, did you, didn't order I it. I didn't get the second part. I'm not going to get it until I know for a fact that it's going to get fixed. That you makes know. sense. I, 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 I can respect that. Now, the second part, the cliffhanger at the end, I'm like, okay, then. What the hell is going on? Put it. I'll, I'll give you guys a hint, though. Reincarnation. Ooh. Oh, what? You can't do that. You can't how do many that. how many comic books are they coming out with? I think there's supposed Three. to be six in I thought there's supposed to be six in total. Six. I think so. And they're okay, only there's supposed on three. Yeah, they're, they're, they're on three, three right now. Total. Yeah, three is up for pre-order. I don't remember when it said it was supposed to ship though. Somebody said December of last year, but I don't know. Uh probably like December of 2026. <laughs> <laughs> Would not surprise. Yeah. I, I, I even, but I even commented. I think it was on uh, something Ruth posted that, you know, in 2020, 2030, when we finally have all the comics. Yeah. Like, I hope it doesn't take that long, but I honestly would not be surprised. Yeah. Could you imagine? I think, I think she said something on Twitter about that. I think that's where you saw yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's Twitter. Well, this kind of, I guess, would go into another topic that we were going to talk about just like 2023 black veil bride stuff kind of what are we hoping to see from the band this year okay. as far as Can like tours music anything like that Can i go first go, yeah go cassidy yes, yes okay okay so i'm hoping that early this year that they released like uh like obviously more merch and like um a single or something or uh i don't even know like if they did like a mini tribute to like legion of the black or something um and then Dude, didn't they hint at something like that the other day on their instagram stories yeah, they, yeah. Did. they did well that's um, it divine then, turns 10 sunday so yeah um so and then i think i'm hoping that they do like their own headline tour like in yes. the spring in like the spring or like late spring early summer and then yeah. like i'm hoping that they do a tour uh like in fall as well i think it'd be really cool if they did like um a tour with um like shit, like pierce the veil or yeah, you mentioned um, that on, on jake's twitch battle the veil hold on i prevail on. i prevail okay so these are my ideas for them to use for <laughs> possible tours okay of who they should go with okay so hear me out okay um i got i'm scrolling through my list of <laughs> people um they should do an, another they should do like another black mass tour with uh falling reverse because I was in high school when that was happening, and I missed it. And I was pissed off because I. I did loved. too. I'm so pissed. <laughs> um, anyway. so if they did a tour, if they did another tour with Falling in Reverse, I would spend hella money. Um, and then if they did, um, because they they toured with Asking Alexandra before, and I think that would be cool to see them because I do like them. Um, do any of you guys listen to like Avenged Sevenfold or uh, Slipknot or anything like that? Oh my not too God, much. I, I like a bench sevenfold. Not horrible. really Slipknot. Okay, Slipknot, so, you gotta get into. I think it'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think it'd be cool to like if they did a tour with either of them, um, or um, even if they had like Escape the Fate open for them. I think that'd be cool. Um, <sighs> but here's here's my thinking with if they did Fall Universe and Black Hole Brides together. Andy and Ronnie mm -hmm. perform Doing asshole, asshole together. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, that song lives rent free in my head. Yeah. But <laughs> and then and then Andy could come out during uh, Bad Girls Club and they can do yeah, great that music video. video. Yep, and then Cece can hop on the drums during drugs. Yeah, 
Yes. Why yep. is that? Cece drummed for Falling in Cece. Reverse for a short period of time. Yeah. And, and he's, he's in, in that, that video. video. What? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Ethan's just over here like, what? What? Are you no, you're you didn't fucking know that. with me. Are you nope. serious? No, I'm, I'm dead serious. Yeah, look it up. CC drum for falling in reverse. Yeah, for a little bit. Yeah, for a short period of yeah, time. Yeah, because they're they're all like they're all like friends. Oh what? So. Oh, that's so cool, man. Yeah. So re- those are my I reasons why I think they should tour together with falling in reverse again. Oh yeah, I'm totally oh, not absolutely. biased. It's really cool to see that, like, the guys in Blackville are kicking it with Asking Alexandria, Falling in Reverse, and now Motionless and White and Ice Nine Kills. Yes. Oh, That's my That's cool. Because, dude, so terrible. many, and, like, from what I understand, so many bands, like, have just taken a massive dookie on Blackville, and I don't yeah. know why. For sure. That sucks. I think yeah. didn't Chris kind of touch on this a little bit? I don't remember exactly what he said, but like getting yeah. Chris touch on it, they're all scared that Black Veil because they know Black Veil is just as good, if not better, than they are. I think it was because they came into the scene like so young and fresh and they were gaining popularity yeah. pretty quickly. Yeah. And other bands and they were, were like dressed like Motley Crue. And they were dressed yeah. like that, right? Yeah. Like you had oh, yeah. like Pierce the Veil, a day to remember, like they came into the scene not looking like that. Yeah. And maybe had a bit of a harder start than they did, but because Blackville Brides' yeah. look and sound was a combination of things, I think that's what drew a lot of yeah. people to them. And other bands, I think, were just kind of like maybe a little bit jealous yeah. of the fact that they got popular so quickly. Yeah, yeah. Right. and I and I think and then I think Ronnie really uh, liked that a lot and was drawn to that. Well, I mean, for a while he had a fucking bullet, so. You can't tell me that he wasn't like. <laughs> hey, Cassidy, I want to raise you on um, a tour. Oh raise, raise yeah. you. How do you? How, what? How does the old saying go? I'll raise you. A, gosh darn it! I can't. Don't know. Words or I don't know what it is. You go. I just, raise. I raise your black bill brides and falling in reverse for. Yes. Part two. Yes. That. Um. So we call it the Four right. Holy Horsemen of the Apocalypse Tour. That's extravagant. <laughs> August Burns Red, Black Veil Brides, Ooh. Fit for a King, and Skillet. Oh, fuck. Dude, I love Skillet so much. Good Dude, show, that, to- that tour would sell out in seconds. Right. Oh, for sure. They all have a very big common Christian theme to them can kind of well i don't know about the other two but like yeah um they have uh, definitely black veil and a uh, skillet i know is a christian band but like oh yeah fit for a king is too and so is august burns red I, 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 I really listened to too much of them so i couldn't say but i'll take your word for it i didn't really <laughs> sniff that out until my friend at the time was like ian you know august burns red fit for a king those are christian bands right and i'm like bullshit uh, like look it up and i'm like okay I looked it up, and sure enough, in the description in Google. Do you guys think that Black Belt Brides will keep running off of uh, the morning? Or do you think, like, later this year, they'll just put out a song randomly? Because I, yeah. I know that Jake, Jake is working on, um, he said in a stream last night that he was working on, um, oh, hi, Helena, um, that he was working on music for... Uh, Corey and like their music thing so they're basically rebranding Alonia to uh Born to Burn mm-hmm, so yeah. do you think with him working on that kind of stuff if he's low-key working on stuff for Black Veil as well he mentioned that actually he mentioned that he hopes so- like he's obviously said working stuff rebranding Alonia as Born to Burn but he's also like maybe he said picked up that old guitar Hello. and just started dicking around with it and he was like writing songs <laughs> and stuff that Hopefully, if it doesn't get like translated to Born to Burn, some of it could get translated to Black Veil as well. Yeah. Come on, Helena. Here's the thing. Here. I'm going to touch base on that. To be perfectly blunt, I don't know. I do not know what they have planned. However, yeah. whatever they plan, it, I, I'm guaranteed to like it. Oh, oh yeah. absolutely. Yeah. We, I think we, we, all, know. we don't know what's going to happen because... Yeah. I, I don't know because like obviously they had the morning lot because really the morning from what I understand is what was supposed to be the Phantom Tomorrow part two 
Yeah. Yes. And there's Phantom Tomorrow Part 2 just wasn't working out the way they planned. So they put out the EP with the morning music on it, which is yeah. what that is. And really, when you think about it from that perspective, it does, it fits, it still fits, even though it's not the Phantom yeah. Tomorrow Part 2. It yeah. still works. I wish, I wish they still had uh, gone with Phantom Tomorrow Part 2. Me I too. Was, I, right. And it would have been nice for them to add to that story line that they had going for the Phantom Tomorrow. And there's a lot of potential. There was a lot of potential yes. with that video series, especially ending think, on Torch. Oh, yeah. oh my god! And I think, I think it was honestly Torch. just like the decision of like the record later label. And if it was Samarian, suck my cock. Um, <laughs> I'm mad at you if that was part, if that was the reason why they couldn't do Fan of Tomorrow Part Two. We could argue about whose decision it was, but at the end of the day, yeah. it's not really up to the fans, and that sucks. No, but no. We, we we do want. We want to hear it. We want to hear what happens to Blackbird because, if I recall correctly, when Andy was doing the um, break the analysis of the album, he was yeah. breaking it down yeah. song by song. Yeah. Essentially, what you have happening is Avengers: I- Infinity War, right? Thanos yeah. snapping his fingers, and then all the heroes lose, and he wins. So that's like nine, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, from what I can understand, nine wins. Blackbird dies, and then all the other heroes fall into nothing. But a thing that I like about Black Thought Brides, too, is even though if they don't, like, since this part two didn't happen, like, there's always, I feel like they always find a way to kind of build off of other albums. Because you have, right, like, yeah, you have, you, I think that's kind of what you have, like, do. Wretched and Divine, where they have, like, Legion of the Black, and it's still, like, this big thing, right? And they're defeating. Yeah. The bad people and then now you have uh the phantom tomorrow where it was like blackbird and nine right so even if there yeah. isn't yeah. going to and be this part two exactly uh, i don't i, w- I wasn't a fan i didn't become a fan until after wretched and divine came out so i could be completely wrong about this but i think wretched and divine's about that uh overcoming the fear within you yeah okay good and then the phantom tomorrow is about not placing not putting someone on a pedestal and just becoming your own hero yeah yeah, just look into the sky and you'll become the blackbird. I want to yeah. branch that too and also say that um, I think Andy had mentioned in the video that The Phantom Tomorrow 2 is also about never losing hope, even when everything is fading away into nothingness. When oh, every- yeah, like, like that, that when wasn't the- it for what? Fall Eternal, wasn't it? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think, I think it's the album as a whole too, but like yeah, no matter yeah, yeah, how yeah. bad shit gets, yes. always remember uh, to You can still free. rise up from the ashes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, um I think The Phantom Tomorrow 2 is originally going to be told from the villain side of things. You know, cuz there's two sides to every story. Yeah, it was supposed to be more focused on 9 from what I had heard Which I would like, love to have, yeah. I, again I can respect the band's decision that things just weren't going the way they were hoping but still I would have loved to have seen that like that would have been so cool but just thinking of like the songs that were on the morning like I can definitely see how that would have like ended up on Phantom Tomorrow Part 2 if that would have oh, happened yeah. like Devil oh, yeah. like hearing the lyrics in oh, Devil it's yeah. like oh yeah okay I get it if any of us have New Year's resolutions for oh, you yeah. know that you've set for yourself oh Cassidy, do you want to like, go first? Outro? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cassidy will yeah. go first. Cassidy okay. Go first. Um, so I'm not really one for New Year's resolutions rather than um, I've always had this mindset of just continuing to grow as a person throughout the year and uh, just continue growing and working towards those goals that you have set for yourself before. And um, I guess one of the things that I like to live by, and this is something that like my four boss had said to me, um is just to be a better person today than you were yesterday so i feel like that's something uh that i try to live by but i never set i never set new year's resolutions for myself i just think that and we've talked about this in like psychology class and stuff so don't mind me being like super nerdy or throwing shit out here but uh every like every class that i've been into for like psychology and stuff we've talked about New Year's resolutions, why they fail and stuff. And I think part of it is just people have such big hopes and dreams for that New Year's resolution or that goal that they set for themselves for the year that they don't think about the smaller steps that have to go into achieving that goal. So when they realize how much work it's going to be to get into that and achieve that, 
then they just kind of throw it off the side of the road and give up and throw it, throw in the flag essentially, instead of just focusing on, I should work on this small goal. And then once I get to that, let's see what the next step is. So, yeah. No, that, that actually makes a lot of sense. And I mean, thinking back when I used to really like make, try to make new year's resolutions, like I agree. I did not think about the smaller steps. I just looked at the big picture. It's like, ah, and yeah. then just fell through. I completely, yeah. Understand. yeah, that totally makes sense. And I think in today's world, like, and you can, you can give me shit for this or tell me I'm wrong, but a lot of people these days are kind of just lazy and don't want to put in that work towards something and just think they just that expect it to happen. Have, yeah. And they don't think that, you know, you have to put a lot of time, a lot of effort. You have to sometimes a lot of money into whatever that goal is. Obviously for myself, it's art and flute playing. Like for fuck's sake, I've been waiting almost a year, probably a year and a half now to buy a new flute. And do I have the money for it? No. Will I save for it? Maybe. We'll see how the concert season goes. But <laughs> right. um, so like, I think a lot of people don't realize that there's a lot of time, a lot of effort, and you have to take some, like make some sacrifices for uh, your goals or your dreams to reach. And uh, I think Lonnie has discussed this before in like vlogs and stuff. That, oh yeah. He's discussed uh, it at length several times. Have, oh oh yeah. Too. Like you have to essentially make sacrifices. Like, do I go out and drink tonight or should I stay home and work on, this uh piece of music or uh this drawing or something should i update my etsy should i do this instead of going out with friends and unfortunately that's kind of how it works uh that's just the reality of it you have to make sacrifices um and if people don't understand that that you're trying to work towards something bigger and make something of your life or feel fulfilled in some way and they give you shit for it or they don't support you in any way, then that's on them. And if you lose them, that's on them. And you'll find better people that will support you, like you guys or the Black Hill Bride, Brides Army, the band, uh, Ruth and Nicole and everybody else. So, yeah. Very well said, Cassidy. I, I'm, I'm going to add on to that when it's my turn, but uh, okay. I'll let... I'll let Bellamy go next. Yeah, I, for me personally, like, I, I got out of the habit of practicing, like, my music, musicianship. It's a long story behind that. Not a very pleasant one. But it's like, I'm getting back into that habit of practicing, and it's so hard. It's like, not that I don't necessarily have the time. On weekends, I generally don't. But, like, during the week, I do. And it's just, like, getting, all, like, motivating myself. The drive is there, but the physical drive is like, nope, fuck you. So, yeah, yeah I've, I've definitely gotten better at that. And, you know, it's just like a better situation where I can practice is just getting back into that habit is so hard. Oh, yeah. And like once mm. you get over kind of like that roadblock or that mental block or whatever. Oh, yeah. Kind like, of, like the more consistent you do it, like you basically are just, you know, conditioning yourself mm. to be like, you know what, just fucking do it. Like you might as well. That's I'm starting to get more into that mentality. And another thing I want to get over, at least try to get over is like the singing like I, I know I have a good voice. That's not the issue. It's the fact that gives me such social dysphoria of how other people would perceive my voice. I want to touch base on both of you. Oh my god, that sounded really creepy. Um, <laughs> okay, listen, Cassidy, you have just, oh my god, like, dude, do you have any idea how many people don't want to freaking work in this economy? Why? Why? What's what's the excuse? Get up and go do something. It would drive me crazy just sitting at home. Dude, I I know a couple of guys that I used to hang out with almost every weekend. And I guarantee you they're sitting at home smoking dope and playing Xbox instead. Definitely. Their dreams happen. Or just going out and finding a job or going to school or working. Yeah. Like, dude. It, like, you should be able to work on better yourself. And if people are trying to get in the way of that, then they're not worth your time. No, they're not. Oh, and I've had to cut out Absolutely. plenty of toxic people, dude. Some of oh, the people yeah. that I grew up with, some of the people that I adored more than anything, I just started to see like an ex-girlfriend, though she wasn't exactly a peach herself, completely psychotic. We all know who it is. Anyway, yep. but she did <laughs> point this out. She pointed out that some of the people I grew up with really treated me like dirt. 
garbage. And the more I distanced myself away from those people and started hanging around people like Ruth Nicole, Victoria, Cassidy Bellamy, Rebecca Jasmine, Sherry, all those guys. And then like friends I made in college, the more I started to see, wow, I need to know my worth. I need to know I'm not just some punching bag for these people. Oh, man. As for you, <laughs> Bellamy, as for you, do not be afraid to be yourself, okay? Embrace who you are. doesn't matter what people perceive you as. Uh, you, you, you need to understand that there is only one you in this world. You need to be yourself, unapologetically be yourself. Exactly. Uh, especially when it comes to... I could not have said it better. Dude. Okay, Ian. Do you want to share some of your goals for this year? Resolutions? Only thing I really have, uh, for those of you who don't know, I recently got informed that I will be moving up the chain at Enterprise Rent-A-Car in oh, May. Oh, I saw that in your stories. Oh, yeah. The goal is to just really hit it hard in school and work and then balance out like the podcast on top of it all um, and write more short stories if I have any free time um truthfully victoria that just leaves you a big one for me is just to be more outside of my comfort zone i guess to not be scared to you know go out by myself if i don't have someone to go out with or like ian going up to random people at emo night and interviewing them and just not even <laughs> giving a shit like just <laughs> doing more of that kind of stuff because i just struggle i feel like since covid happened like not seeing people a lot just the social anxiety kind of set in oh and just having God, trouble yes. talking to people so yeah, if you had to... social anxiety before covid you really got it after during COVID. <laughs> and then just some other stuff like i just really want to you know get like make my way closer to being a pro musician or, like a pro guitar player whether that means like getting in like making a band or doing session work, touring work, stuff Lonnie did, right? Yeah. So that would be, that's something I really want to do. And I did, I had a conversation with him and he was like telling me like the full potential is to move to like a bigger city, right? So that's been a toss up to get closer to that goal that I have. But yeah, other than that, just keep growing my YouTube channel, keep growing radioactive, stuff like that. Because now I'm getting like, a thousand views on my guitar videos opposed to like 30 don't know you're when welcome. that happened but you're what am i, I thinking you for them. are you I actually <laughs> how come i didn't know this <laughs> where do you share them i swear share them on like twitter and stuff oh how come i don't see this i'm, I'm, such, I'm, on twitter. I'm such a I bad share them on I think I share them on, um, like, if it's a Black Hill cover, I'll share them on the uh, Facebook oh, page. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because there's, like, thousands of people in that. Yeah. So. But, yeah, and then just even on Instagram, like, I've been getting, like, 400 likes on my videos and stuff oh, yeah. now, which is, like, yeah. a big difference from, oh yeah, like, 40 likes. But I think it's also because I'm expanding now. It's just not people I went to high school with. Yeah. Which most of them can just screw off, but that's a topic for another day. I think that's most people we went to high school with, honestly. Fair yeah, enough. Real. I feel a certain yeah. type of way about a lot of people I went to high school with. Do you guys say, like, so a a cut sleeve. Do you call that a cozy or a koozie? Koozie! A koozie. It is a koozie! Why does everyone say koozie? It's a koozie. Koozie. It's a koozie. It's a koozie. It's a koozie. 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 Cozy. 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 Okay, wait, 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 wait. The people of Radioactive, if you're watching cozy. this video, comment if it is koozy or cozy. Or cozy. 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 Oh. There's two O's. I'm going to smack the shit out of you. Cozy. Are there two O's in it? I've never really paid attention. It depends. I've cozy. seen people spell it. C O. Yeah, I've, I've seen it spelled both I've ways. I've seen people spell, spell it. One. C O Z I E, and they call it a koozie. It's C O O Z I E. I've seen it spelled with one. I've seen it spelled both ways, but usually I think it's like this is one. It depends because if you call it a cozy, it's going to be C O Z Y. But if it's yeah. a koozie, no, I've spelled it. Sp it's seen it spelled C O Z I E. I've seen it spelled C O Z I E. It's koozie. 
this I is the die on that hill. <laughs> this is the important question <laughs> that we asked. Can I get a Hoya? No. no. You can get a <laughs> Do your best bleh. Chris motionless bleh. 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 Let's hear it, Cassidy. I can't do it. Yeah, you can. I can't do it. No. We all did no, it. Wait, 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 wait. You go, you're my motherfucker. Bleh. Well, all right, y'all. I think that wraps up tonight's installment of a radioactive podcast. But before we go, but before we go, we're going to But b- before we go. Did we do Beartooth already? I'm trying to think if we have or not. No. We, we haven't. haven't. No. All right, ready? Yes. Three, two, one. Bear. 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 Tooth. 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 Okay. Tooth. 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 Bear. Tooth. Bear. So in tooth. ASL, bear tooth is bear. Mm-hmm. Tooth. Tooth. Okay. <clears throat> we forgot to mention one very important thing that Cassidy and I have the same birthday. We do. We share the same birthday. Birthday so, twins. Not the same, day, not the same year. Birthday, yeah, not the same but year, to be clear. Same- um, so uh, same day, January 21st. Uh, so Bellamy, you said you're going to be 28, right? Yep. You will. Yep. I will be 28 and you then, will be 25. Yeah. So Bellamy will be 28. I'll be 25. Um, I'm ready for my midlife crisis. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to bring it back to when you were, uh, this, oh my God, show, send her the picture of you from like 2011 so we can put it like right oh. here. Yeah. Okay. Wait. I was that the it. one you had on your story? Yeah, it's yes. hilarious. <laughs> I was so, gonna message you and be like, "Who the fuck is so that?" I didn't that is really. so fetch. Stop trying to bring fetch back. Yeah. On Wednesdays on. we were I didn't think yeah, that was a- you when I saw that. <laughs> I was gonna. I was gonna send. I was gonna reply to that story and be like, "Shut the fuck up. Who is that?" <laughs> good thing i didn't well listen guys that concludes our installment of radioactive podcast for the evening thank you so much for tuning in and remember cassidy what do you always say stay rad damn right <laughs> <laughs>